responsibility. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey. Research validates that culturally responsive and relevant education results in higher academic performance and social success for Native American students. Indian Heritage High School served as a successful national model for urban Indian education. Indian Heritage High School provided an indigenous pedagogy within a multicultural, inclusive, and diverse student and staff setting. Indian Heritage High School's unique culture-based, student-centered, holistic approach was a vital educational, social, economic, cultural, historical resource for the entire intertribal urban community. Following the tragic and sudden loss of Indian Heritage High School principal Robert Eaglestaff, SPS systematically defunded Indian Heritage High School, forcing the high school's closure by 1998. Reducing and transforming a high school which was once a prominent educational institution into a mere shadow of the once vibrant community educational institution it once was. The program Heritage Middle College was a model unsuitable for the vast unique educational cultural needs of our urban native and non-native students. Hopes for restoring the middle college program back into a viable, visible, educational institution once prominent and successful were dashed despite efforts to restore and revitalize the program back to the successful model developed by Eagle Staff. And in 2013, the doors finally closed. From the years of 1989 to 1996, Indian Heritage High School produced an astounding number of graduates, many of whom went on to pursue their higher education, eventually obtaining their degrees. Some reports indicate a 100% graduation rate of students during the 92-96 era. Hello, my name is Sarah Sense Wilson. I'm Ogallala Sioux, and I'm a volunteer for the Urban Native Education Alliance, a nonprofit, volunteer based, native led organization. Part of what we do is we have been advocating, leading a campaign to support the institution of a native focused high school. that a native focused high school is going to effectively address and bring the necessary resources and support to create an environment for our students to be successful. Hello, my name is Scott Pinkham. I am Ness Burse, our Nimipu, and I'm on the Seattle School Board District 1 Director. And I've been asked, you know, about supporting the need to restore American Indian Heritage High School. And people ask us, you know, is it needed? And I say, Yes, it is something that we need to support our students. We need to have a school where our Native students can go and feel accepted, knowing that they belong, and knowing that they can contribute. I was fortunate enough that I grew up on the Yakima Indian Reservation, and the schools that I went to, public schools, did reflect the Native uh, culture around us. And that's why I feel that here in the city of Seattle, the home of the, the Duwamish, the land of the Coast Salish people, we need to have a school that reflects the heritage of the grounds that our buildings are played upon. I'm really passionate about the Native Focus High School, being that I'm alumni from American Indian Heritage. That was one of my best experience in the education system ever, was the years I attended there. 
I have been battling the school district for the last six years. I've given public testimony, I've written letters, I've been to uh, protests, um, and today I still struggle with the school district fighting for a K-8 school located here in North Seattle and just being very persistent and making sure my voice is heard for not only my children but for the other Native children in Seattle Public Schools. My name is Pawina Nason. I went to Indian Heritage from 1991 and I graduated in 1995. We actually moved from the Colville Reservation is where we're from, Nispelum, Washington. Uh, it was a small place and coming over from a small town to a big city uh, was a big change for us. Being integrated into the city amongst our own people made us more comfortable personally. That was something that I did need. Um, like I said before, I don't know if I would have been able to make it in a school of like 1,000 to 1,500 people. Um, I kind of probably would have just gave up and dropped out, which I know happens to a lot of Native kids. And I think they do need that focused learning and people who understand them to actually get through school, to graduate, to be behind them 100% and understand who they are as a person, Native person in particular. My name is Angela Angel Hill. I attended Indian Heritage High School from 1986 to 1987, graduating in June of 1987. I am a member of the Suquamish tribe. I think having a Native-focused educational institution in Seattle, such as Indian Heritage High School, bridges the gap between connecting our social constructs and keeping us together, giving us the opportunities to build off of one another and identify within ourselves. I would definitely say it bridges the divide and it gives us a place to identify within each other where we might fit. Where, where, where our strengths are and where our weaknesses are and where to build from them based on who we are as a people instead of based on what other people think we should be. We're advocating for a Native school, not a program. What we understand and what we've seen in the many years of advocacy within the Seattle Public Schools is that Based on district leadership with the superintendents, there's been four superintendents since we started doing this work, um, is that they, superintendents can close programs at will. I'm Jim Simmons, a uh, retired administrator from Seattle Public Schools. Between my wife and myself, we have about 80 years of experience in the system <laughs> as teachers, principals, and central office administrators. My first question being, the Indian Heritage High School, as it's said often, needs to be restored. That school was graduating, all of the seniors, each, every year. And the school district, in their wisdom, cut transportation. It was a citywide program. When you cut transportation to a citywide program, you kill the program because enrollment goes down, which is exactly what happens, and the district knows that that's what happens. And so they closed the program then and said it didn't have enough enrollment after they had cut transportation. Not just cut it, ended it. Well, anyway, previous uh, superintendent and school boards have promised the restoration of the Indian Heritage High School, but nothing is happening in that direction. In Heritage High School, I hear a lot about, I have heard about since I came. Um, you know, we are looking at all kinds of different options because we are in a budget crisis right now. So I don't see starting in high school. Um, moving forward for a while. As far as the best, the building levy, it really is to remodel and restore, to remodel and restore. There are a lot of uh, older buildings to make sure students have safe places to learn, a lot of safety and security, things that will happen all across the city, as well as you know making sure we have the, enough classrooms for students who are coming to school. My name is Carolyn Kyle and I teach at Licton Springs K-8. 
And I have a proposal. As opposed to decreasing our program, truncating it to a K-5 after a multi-decade history of being a K-8, through eight, my suggestion is to invite Middle College to merge with Licton, thus planting the seeds to create a K-12 through native focus school. These kids need a pathway that will guide them through high school as well as furthering their education beyond. People have asked, you know, why the need for a native focus school when we had Indian Heritage and it's closed now. It, it closed because of the costs and that will be the argument as to not open the school again because it was expensive. And that's something that, yes, we know it was expensive, does, uh, did have a high cost per student, but it was successful. Students that weren't able to succeed in the other schools, the high schools, were able to go to Indian Heritage High School. And they're able to achieve where 100%, each and every graduate went on to a higher education. So they didn't stop at high school, where a lot of our native students don't even get that far. And to have a school that encourages students to be themselves and to be successful and to reach beyond high school graduation is the need for a native focused school. So my name is Connie Benelli. I am a Samish Indian Nation tribal enrolled member. I lived in a small town outside of Bellingham growing up. When our mom decided to move us into Seattle, um, I tried to attend the, the regular schools, which were really hard for me. I, I didn't want to go to school. I didn't fit in. We were picked on a lot for being Native and for um, being who we were, so it was really hard for me to go to school. I found out about the Indian Heritage myself, actually, and told my mom, I said, I want to go to an all-Native school. So my mom took me in, and I signed in to go to Indian Heritage. I really enjoyed going to school there, made friends, all the Native kids were there, the classes were small, and I really enjoyed being around our culture and learning everything that we learned and I graduated in 77. I felt like if I hadn't gone to Indian Heritage, I might not have graduated, went on to college, and I am now a dental assistant. Now I am a manager supervisor at the Seattle Indian Health Board, going on my 40th year. I feel like if I hadn't gone to Indian Heritage, I might not have graduated, and things wouldn't have gone away as well in my life as they are right now if I hadn't gone to a smaller school. My name is Vicki Pinkham. I am Clinkett from the Cha'akwashkitan clan of Angoon, Alaska. I'm passionate about restoring and revitalizing the Native Focus School at the Robert Eagle Staff site. I say this because we have elders and their wisdom and their knowledge can be part of the classrooms here at the site if it would be revitalized. Once those are gone, once those voices are quieted, we, we don't have that knowledge, we don't have that wisdom that's gonna come along with it. Revitalizing it, the Native Focus School would allow for education of all races in this Seattle Public School. We're talking over 30, 50,000 kids that are attending school here and they have no idea where we're at. The Duwamish is not a federally recognized tribe. The city is named after Chief Self. He is part of this history and yet there are a lot of people that don't realize that. And we're not talking about just having a native focus school for natives but bring in everybody from the community. Have kids be proud of who they are and where they come from. Indian Heritage High School was truly a special thing. I have family members that went to that school and it helped them greatly. They succeeded and moved on to a better path in life. Here being an urban native, you're very disconnected from your traditional culture as well as that of many similar groups and you don't really know much about it from when you grow up. You know, we feel very isolated in the regular school system. They don't really know our ways, our history, and what's really affected us with the history of education and the system that's based on what the Europeans brought. One of the key concerns that the First Nations community here in Chief Seattle City has is the poverty to prison pipeline. 
And this is a concern for many communities, but especially for us uh, as community members and parents. And by the four measurements that the uh, Seattle Public Schools took, this is their own data from their own website. In the areas that were negative, Native Americans scored high or the highest. And in the areas that were positive, Native American kids scored low or the lowest. And this is a disgrace. Our kids can't be that inferior and we intend to prove it because in the past there was a proven program in Indian Heritage High School. And because it worked for so many kids, it can work for our kids today. We're firmly convinced of it. The school was initially designed to be a dropout prevention program. I started here in uh, late uh, 1994 as a part-time student. Uh, from this recount, I can tell you that everyone in the 1994 graduating class graduated. Everyone in the 1995 class graduated. Everyone in the 1996 senior class graduated. So this, as a program designed to prevent children from dropping out, it had posted uh, a success rate that hadn't been seen before or since. For our children to be able to grow and be successful in life, our children need to have a strong community, resources. There's just a number of opportunities that are being missed by not having significant structure in the education system for our kids in our community. I think that even in today's political arena, having so many Native Americans elected to Congress shows us that understanding and getting a higher education is truly important, although it may have taken us longer to get into the Senate or into the House of Representatives, it can be done. And a Native-focused high school will give the students an opportunity to learn many of the things that are hidden within our policies in the political realm behind resolutions and amendments and such that that are not taught in public schools. They are not taught to the Native students the things that happened to their ancestors 100 years ago, 200 years ago, unless they're going to a Native-focused high school or a Native college. They're not going to learn those things unless it's in a, in a little tiny concrete class somewhere maybe they might find it but they need to be given it. We need to give it to them. They need to understand it as they're growing up because I think in my own upbringing, that hurt me, that put me behind because I didn't understand the hurt, the knowing hurt that I saw in my parents' face. There are little pockets here and there in schools that may have a majority of Native students going to their schools, but that's just you know, maybe one class, maybe one period, you know, to just focus on Native kids in general. Um, I don't think that's enough. You know, going to a school where it's like 100% Native focused and understanding Natives, I think that is what is needed. Uh, because the only people who do understand Native kids would be like Native staff and people who understand the culture. Even if they're not Native, if they understand the culture, I think that would help. And also being a part of the community and being able to introduce other, you know, resources that Native kids may need, you know, whether it is, you know, going to the clinic, whether it's homelessness, whether it's sports, you know, if it's all focused and we're all part of the community and we all, you know, connect with each other, then we have all those resources in one place. In Seattle Public Schools, we don't really have an educational institution that wholeheartedly supports uh, Native American learners. As far as an establishment, we do not have the support from the district, which um, hurts our learners every day, um, whether it's special ed, your higher academic programs like IB, AP, um, so the revitalization of Indian heritage would bring the community back together. I'm 17 years old. I go to Shorewood High School. I have been jumping around in foster homes. I, I have been uprooted. I barely know anything about my culture. I don't know anything much about my history except for what's taught in school. And it's really hurtful. And I think we need a native focused school in order to learn all of these things, to change our perspective, 
and I definitely need to learn more about what's going on today. Because I feel like it would be a magnet for diversity, for diverse kids, and so we can come together and learn more about like different cultures and different people's backgrounds, and especially if there's a native focus high school, then you can be walking in the hall and then like stop and talk and then learn about someone else's tribe. I'm Alex, I'm 17, and I think it'd be important to have a native focus high school because I think it would help native students like be more successful and give them more opportunities. Mainstream schools today in high school, we're basically learning about what non-Native Americans did and how they did it. They're not even te teaching what actually happened in Native American history. And it's both mostly been um, from their perspectives and not ours. And what was taught. Yeah. Um, with the Native Option School, I feel that more Natives would gather and definitely more cultures, many people, many backgrounds would be interested in Native American school with their perspectives and what they're teaching. The non-natives would get a perspective and more knowledge about what our ancestors have endured and what we have endured as well. I feel like they would have more mutual respect once they know what actually happened. They'll have more respect for what our people have been going through and what we are going through. Um, because it would help Native students and then because the Natives learn differently, they do things differently than other people and I think that would be better for everyone because then not just like one specific type of learner, it help all the different kinds. I'm 14 and I'm Kweka Haida. I chose to love heritage because for, for like sports to like go to state and like win state or have a chance and I, and, and I like like the education there because the classes are smaller and we learn like our culture like see the weaving like like once a month and I like it because uh, my grades are good. To love heritage is different because you see like or like or like you see like your culture and like you know natives everywhere and like and like you learn like more your culture learn like uh like like what it was and like and like you learn like your language like the shoot scene and stuff like that. And I feel like if we went to a school with more natives and more people that look like us, maybe we'll have more self-respect rather than walking in the hall and seeing a bunch of non-natives and not having any idea where we belong in our community. So, yeah. It is very important to me that I will get to see this urban native school because at my school there are no natives. There was one native but he didn't graduate high school. He left. He felt that he wasn't accepted. And when other people say, oh, there's a Native American in this school? I didn't know that. They think natives are died out. Or it's like, oh, most natives are on the reservation. But with this urban native school, there'd be more natives around. We'd get to see more of our culture and more of our artwork and just learning what's happening today. From going into psychology, that'd provide me more resources onto which I wanna be a CPS worker to help more native kids like myself find forever homes. I'm a Dakiapi, Chante Waste and I choose up, Wakiwanatan, Machiapi, Ya Waslaha, a Matahani Lo, Ate Wayagi Charles Rambley, Ina Wayagi Donna Harrison. Well hello, my English name is Matt Rambley. My Lakota name is Wakiwanatan from Standing Rock, but living out here in Seattle. And um, I just wanted to say that I absolutely think it's uh, crucial that we bring back, revive uh, our Indian Heritage School uh, as a place to be able to uh, provide not only 
uh, a, a kind of a center for learning about uh, traditions and culture and heritage, uh, but a place to catch our, our Native students who are falling through the cracks in the Seattle Public Schools. Uh, the data speaks for itself. You know, less than 50% of our Native American students are graduating from the Seattle Public Schools. So the question is, uh, is what is our, uh, what is the Seattle Public Schools going to do uh, to catch our students? And uh, one of the ways uh, that, that we can look into uh, supporting our, our tribal kids is uh, to provide a, a, a high school program that catches them uh, and that can provide that more one-on-one -on -one support they need where the curriculum is also uh, culturally relevant. Uh, that doesn't mean that culture isn't taught in the other Seattle public schools classrooms because since time immemorial tribal sovereignty curriculum, uh, Senate bill that was passed, that curriculum should be taught uh, statewide and in all classrooms. So the creation of the Indian Heritage High School doesn't mean that uh, culture and history is taught just at the Indian Heritage School but that there's a more concentrated effort to uh, support our, our tribal youth. So uh, I, I personally feel whatever we can do to catch even just one of our uh, native kids that's slipping through the cracks, uh, then we should do it. And uh, we should absolutely uh, create these places and spaces to support our tribal kids. Um, and that was. We believe our native students should not have to compromise their identity that they should not have to sacrifice who they are, who and what they're about and their history and their experience and their, their traditional knowledge. They should not have to leave that at the front door before they walk into a school. And what we see often is that a lot of our kids are having to compromise and set aside their identity to fit in the mold um, of the mainstream dominant um, classrooms and school and where they are invisible, where they are overlooked, where or they're racially um, scripted and um, so there's so few native students in any one school that it becomes even more isolating for students because they're not able to even uh, bond very well and identify other peers that are sharing that same challenge and so our students become even uh, more withdrawn and even more um, isolated and feel disconnected from their schools. Now there are a lot of Native students that do very well in mainstream schools and are successful in um, joining um, the band or joining other, you know, uh, volleyball team or what have you, and that's great. We we commend, we we go to their games, we support them, we cheer those kids on. They're doing great. We we support that. And there is a large number of kids that are not succeeding, that are not bridging, you know, that cultural divide. And, um, and those are the kids that I'm most concerned about because those are the kids that end up on the streets. Those are the kids that end up in uh, treatment or in jail or in other um, institutions. And it's, up to, it's our responsibility. Our kids are sacred. And there is an inherent drive um, that I think I was born with, possibly, as part of my DNA, my Lakota DNA that tells me that, there, that I, I, I have this responsibility. And thankfully, there is a whole lot of people that believe in this too. A native alternative option high school will focus on providing authentic indigenous pedagogy with rigorous academic standards and high expectations for students' success. A native alternative option high school will seek to collaborate, partner, and engage with native-based community organizations when determining the basis for hiring staff, establishing leadership, development, design, referrals, training consultation, and program support.
Finally, it is our goal to pursue educational excellence with a lens on racial and cultural equity to fully realize our vision for a Native-focused option high school for serving all Seattle Public School students alike. My name is Scott Pinkham, and I support continuing Licton Springs as a K-8 Native-focused school, as well as the restoration of Indian Heritage High School. My name is Carolyn Kyle, and I support the growth of Licton Springs K-8 through to create a Native-focused K-12 Seattle Public School. I'm Vicki Pinkham, I'm Clinkett. I support Native-focused high school because it would enrich the lives of all Natives, all people, all nations within the Seattle Public Schools. My name is Glenn Pinkham, I'm, I'm a Yakima, and uh, I believe in carrying the uh, vision forward because I feel that it, I would like our children to have the same uh, benefits that everybody else has. That's far as being accepted, have a sense of belonging, because everybody else gets to have that. Thank you. My name is Amadanio Joseph Oguara III. I'm of the Colville Confederated Tribes, and I believe in carrying the vision forward because the future of our people, the future of our youth and families is at stake, and very much so, our people's ways are about caring about the generations forward into the future. My name is Matt Rimley, and I'm Lakota, and I believe in carrying the vision forward because uh, our tribal students uh, deserve to have the opportunity to, to know their history, their language, their culture, their traditions, their teachings, uh, to know who they are and uh, where uh, they come from, and uh, for us to, to learn from each other as uh, Native people, as Indigenous peoples, and really all cultures, learning from uh, what we have to offer as uh, Native peoples through our knowledge and through our teachings. Lakulastista Duftuabschud. Place of the fire I am named, I'm Duwamish. My name is Tom Spear. I'm an elder for Urban Native Education Alliance, Elders Advisory Council. I'm also a proud member of the Duwamish tribe. My mother is a descendant of Princess Angeline and her father, Chief Seattle. Indian Heritage High School is important because our kids only get one chance to get an education. And we want their education in the Seattle Public Schools to be a first class education that will carry them forward throughout their lives. We're carrying the vision forward because it's important to break the barriers that prevent you from accomplishing your goals. Please carry the vision forward for us. Please carry the vision forward for us. A tough question to ask because we wish it could happen tomorrow, but if a native focus option high school was just dropped down in Seattle and every native urban kid got to go, would you be there? I would love to go there for my senior year. I'd be more interconnected with other natives and I could be like, oh, hey, okay, you're native too? What tribe? Unity to our community, opportunity is what we need. People praying and respecting, full of honesty. We are the home of the prayer, bringing dreams, hope, and faith. So, want you all pray for our people, keeping our culture alive. Every day is a struggle on the inside. Traditionally, you gotta believe that together we can change, together we can change. We gotta respect our elders, we gotta respect each other. Open minds and open hearts for my sisters and my brothers. Equilibrium is a new curriculum, education to reach your destination. Train the brain, reprogram your mind, open your eyes before you run out of time. All we have to say, time is all we have. All we want to do, time is what we need. Is of the essence, essence. Is a greatness in the Time for you to believe. Faith, love, hope, and respect. Values that we should all reflect. Courage can change the world. Freedom from oppression unfurled.
I got million dollar dreams, thousand dollar thoughts. Gonna change the world, gonna give it all I got. I'ma rise above all the eyes of doubt. Time to show you all what I'm all about. Time is all we have. All we wanna do. Time is what we need. All you need to see. Time is of the essence. Is the greatness in the end. Time for you to believe. All we have to say. Time is all we have. All we wanna do. Time is what we need. All you need to see. Time is of the essence. Is the greatness in the end. Time for you to believe. Time is all we have. All we wanna do. Time is what we need. All you need to see. Time is of the essence. Is a great mystery. Time for you to believe. All you need to see. Time is of the essence. Is a great mystery. Time for you to believe. All you need to see. Time is of the essence. Is a great mystery. Time for you to believe.